Hey guys, this is Lala Legacy back with another episode of Air Minagi's Route. So, we haven't actually gotten into her route like completely yet. We're still in the very beginning stages, so let's keep going. I heard a sound of an engine coming closer. I held the edge of the coffee table and braced for impact. As expected, she drove headlong into the shed again. Oh, she's back! Yeah. It was hard to believe I was getting used to this. <laughs> I'm home! She appeared with her usual red face. Here, freeloader, a present for you! She gave me a rectangular package. Food? Oh, let's see. I unwrapped it. Silly! I promised you something this morning! You'll know when you see it. Huh? I opened the box and the wrappings, and out came an animal soft toy with long limbs. Oh, uh, what's this? Whoa, how nice! It's a sloth! A sloth? You haven't given this to the wrong person, have you? It's for you! You want to replace your dirty puppet, don't you? You can have it. I stuffed it into Misuzu's face. Whoa, yay! She hugged the soft toy. But Haruko snatched it away from her. Hey, hey, I bought it for you, freeloader! She pushed the soft toy onto me again. Don't reject my present. When did I say I wanted this? This morning! Did I say something like that? Even so, you can't choose- or can't you choose something better? It's cute, right, Misuzu? Yep, it's really cute. I want one too. You're going to look more presentable walking around with this rather than that dirty puppet of yours. You think my puppet is some sort of decoration? You mean it's not? Oh, well, of course not. Haven't I shown you my act? It's a prop for my performance. Oh, that's right! She clapped her hands in realization. Your act was so plain that I have no memory of it! What did she take my hotsu er, hojutsu for? But no matter, from now on you'll be using the sloth. It's better than your puppet at making exaggerated movements. <laughs> Make a buttload of money and go wah wah all the way to the bank. Wah wah. Wait. I slapped my face with both hands. Just this morning, I was almost taken in by her sweet talk. Anyway, I said I don't need it. I looked away as soon as I finished saying that, but Haruko sidled up to me. Don't be a meanie. She whispered into my neck. Freeloader, you're such a naughty boy. She was high again. You reek of alcohol. Get away from me. Haruko put a hand across my back. With the same hand, she touched my buttocks. By the time I realized her motive, it was too late. <laughs> Haruko laughed maniacally. My puppet was in her hands. Now you're only allowed to perform with my present. Right? No way, I won't be caught using this. You won't accept my present no matter what. Yeah. Oh, look, you can buy a soft toy from me. Or the soft toy from me. Then I won't lose anything. After that, it's er, it's up to you whether you want to throw it away or give it to me, Suzu. <laughs> yeah, okay. But until then, your puppet stays with me. What? What kind of logic is that? I'm afraid you'll run away without paying up. Of course, I'll give... Of course, I'll give you back your puppet if you pay up right now. How much? Haruko held up a finger. 10,000 yen. An astronomical figure. How about it? No way. Oh, wait, no. That, that's me, Suzu, talking. No way! Yukito-san can't possibly have that much money. She was trying to help me, but man, did that hurt. Oh, well, work hard at it. She patted my shoulder. Another thing, until the day you buy it from me, that soft toy is my sincere present to you. If you handle it roughly, I'm going to do the same to your, uh, same thing to your puppet. My puppet had been taken hostage. I'm going to take a shower. I sweated like a pig today. Haruko got up and left. I stood there in a daze. I wish I could help you with the money, but I don't have much of my allowance left. Misuzu chins in a pinch, too. Uh, maybe. I'll go take a look at my piggy bank. Forget it. Huh? It's not a large sum. I can handle it. But how are you going to make
take the money? You don't have your puppet. Are you going to use the sloth for your performance? I stared at the sloth face to face. No freaking way will this work. It'll definitely work. It's so cute. Cute? How can you find this cute? The hands and feet were too long. It looked disgusting. I have to think of some other way. But I really wonder how your mom's mind works. Yeah, but I'm sure she did that on impulse. Yeah, I think so too. The longer I stayed in this town, the more obstacles appeared that prevented me from leaving. Yeah, and you're gonna have an even bigger obstacle because, yeah, we already know. Misuzu went to bed and I was left with Haruko. I had already wrapped myself with a blanket and took up a sleeping position. The endless screeching of the bugs came in from the netted door. On top of that, there was a low-pitched drone of the, fan mo of the fan's motor. Those were the only sounds audible to my ears. But sleep didn't come. I opened my eyes. Haruko had her forehead pressed against the fan and her hair flying in the wind. She looked to be trying to dry her hair that way. She noticed I was awake and turned to face me. Freeloader. Why did you leave my present there? She pointed at the sloth in the corner of the room. Oh, right. I got up, grabbed the sloth by a leg, dragged it to my sleeping spot, and then wrapped my blankets around the both of us. Don't you feel hot? It's hot. You don't have to hug it to sleep. <sighs> right. I took the sloth out from under the blanket and placed it next to me. Upon seeing that, Haruko turned to face the fan again. You're not drinking tonight. <laughs> That's true, I forgot. But I don't feel like drinking anymore now that I'm sober. Then don't drink. You drink every day, don't you? It's going to damage your health. You're right. We both lapsed into silence and the background noise became louder once more. Why don't you turn on the TV? I don't mind the noise. There's no shows I want to watch at this hour. You could just leave the TV on. Nah, it's just gonna be noisy. I see. Up until now, I had only been watching Misuzu's life, but now I was watching Haruko's. If I wasn't around, she'd probably just sit quietly in front of the fan by herself. When I thought about the kind of life she was leading, nobody could blame her for drinking alone every time to cheer up her or to cheer herself up. The present might also be one of her ways to entertain herself. She took pleasure in surrounding herself with misfortune and watching them. It was a lonely sport. Hey, freeloader! Haruko turned towards me again. Want me to introduce a job to you? You can make any money with... You can't make any money with your performance. Just get a more stable job. Within a month, you might even have enough to get out of the country. The job description suits you, too. You've always been traveling, so your lower body should be quite strong from all the walking. You don't mind the heat, do you? But on second thought, you're bad at starting a conversation. And you have a villain's face, so I'm not so sure. Oh well, never mind those. It all depends on how willing you are. What do you think? Uh... No. Come on. There we go. No thanks. I rejected her proposal. I see. The idea does sound interesting. But I don't want to depend on you. In the first place, isn't this whole thing just about us not wanting to give in to each other? Yeah, you're right. I just forget what I said. Okay. Haruko switched off the fan. It's a cool night. She looked out of the window. I watched her face for a while. When I finally got tired of doing so, I closed my eyes. Then I drifted into sleep. Alright, so it's July 21st, Friday. When I woke up, I could see a monkey's face placed right in front of me. Whoa! Oh, it's just you. It was the sloth puppet. I recalled the conversation I had with Haruko the previous night and felt a little sick. I have to earn money to buy this ugly thing? A way to make money. 
I sat on that thought while I picked up some food with my chopsticks. What will you do? Until now, I've always relied on my show to make money. Now that route's been cut off. Stable job, huh? Can I really find a job in this town? Finding one by myself might take a while. But I don't have a choice. It's all about willpower. I'm really having a hard time, you know. Well, why do I have to put so much work into buying that shitty puppet? It's worth working for because it's cute. Dumbass, you're giving me the chills. You mean you don't want it? Why would I want that thing? I want it. I see. Oh, well, yeah, let's give it to me, Suzu, after buying it. I'll give it to you after I've bought it. Really? Yeah. Yay! All right, then, let me help, too. What should I do? Her humming was coming from the kitchen. She's probably still thinking about it while she's washing the dishes. <sighs> I ponder while I drank the remaining rye tea. Let's go to the shopping district for a change. I set the empty cup on the coffee on the coffee table. Glancing back, I could see that Misuzu was still washing dishes. It looked like she'll take a while to get the cleaning done. So I turned the TV on. A contemporary drama series was on. It seemed to be a story of a wandering traveler who followed the wind. Don't fall in love with me. That's too cool. I watched it for a bit. Wah! It's already this late! Misuzu, who had finished the housework, was in shock when she saw the clock. I need to get ready quickly! She left the room. I picked up my bag. Regarding the sloth sitting next to it, if I had just left it here, Haruko would scold me for not taking good care of it. I stuffed it into my bag. But I couldn't fit, it, fit all of it in. Those long legs kept on popping out. Yukito-san, are you ready? Misuzu's voice echoed through the hallway. No matter how many times I tried to shove it in, an arm or a leg would pop back out. I'm going! In the end, I left it like that and threw the bag over my shoulder. When I got to the hallway, I could see that Misuzu was already waiting for me with her bag. Mm. She walked out of the entry hall while mumbling something. Good morning, Misuzu-chan! A person came out of the house across the street. It was the housewife who I had apologized to yesterday. I remembered she was called Kawada's, or Kawada Zaki. Actually, it was written on the nameplate, too. Good morning, Auntie. Oh, what's wrong? You look a little distressed. Uh, a little bit. <laughs> if you're having any troubles, then just say it. We're neighbors, right? The milk incident had left a bad impression on her, even though it was my fault. But listening to her now, I can tell she's a good person. Uh, then I'll do exactly what you said. Misuzu explained it to the housewife. Do you know of anybody hiring for a day job? A day job? Yeah. For me, Suzu-chan? Not me, for him. She pointed at me, standing behind her. Ah, uh, him. I stepped back a bit. She fixed her gaze on me as if she was analyzing my face. Is it alright if it's a grunt job? Definitely. Yeah, no problem. Yeah, no problem. That should be fine, then. Really? Oh, that's good, Yukito-san. Oh, what does it involve? I asked as I stepped forward. My sister and her husband run a recycling shop in the Market Street. But my brother-in-law, who collects the recycled goods, has, ra has waste pains and can't move. So you'll collect the items for him. Collecting stuff from where? You'll have to go door to door, visiting every house, asking if they have any unwanted goods. But you'll have to be friendly because it relates to the shop's image. I understand. Can you drive? No, I can't. If that's the case, then it'll be a grunt job. Transporting things like TVs and refrigerators, you'll have to use a hand trolley. A hand trolley? That's insane! If you're a man, you'll survive! That's right, Yukito-san, do your best! This fella should think about other people's feelings for a change. You can hear all the details at my sister's shop. I'll go, I'll go give her a call first. 
I asked where the shop was. Although I didn't really understand all of it, I should be fine once I reach the Market Street. Thanks for all your help. Work hard. She looked over at me. Okay. We returned inside the house. I'm glad. Or she did, sorry. Perhaps she was messing around with me. She wouldn't do something like that. Kawarazaki-san is a nice person. Normally, when people find out I don't have a license, they stop the whole hiring process. That's because Yukito-san looks really strong. Come to think of it, weren't you in a hurry? Huh? What time is it now? Does my face look like a clock? Uh, watch. Misuzu took her watch out of her pocket. Well, I've got to run! Dash! She ran out. Misuzu fell extravagantly. Oh, why do you still have to hit me after I've already hurt my head? Are you injured anywhere? My head hurts. Well, that's because I hit it. Anywhere else? I scraped my knee a bit. What to do? There's no time left and my knee is bleeding. Misuzu chains in a double pinch. Oh, no. After a bit of worrying, I'll go stick, a, or I'll go stick on a band-aid. She went back inside the house. You're definitely going to be late. Hmm, this feels good. As usual, Misuzu stretched out on the seawall. On the seawall, the wind was always strong and cool. No, er, that no-failing technique again. Yup, my no-failing technique. Her no-failing technique was to go into the class during the second hour, but pretend to have been there from the very first hour strategy. Plus, it seemed that she had to wait for the rest break before she could go in. I've said it before, it's too obvious. Hmm? <laughs> seemed that she didn't hear me. The wind was too strong. Yukito-san! Or Yukito-san will have to go from house to house, visiting each one to collect all their unwanted items. Misuzu came back to my side. Yeah, should be something like that. Then let me add something to your map. Let me see it for a second. What are you adding? A walkthrough, where you should go to make collecting things easier, stuff like that. Now, if you look at it and try to follow it, it'll feel like I was with you by your side. I won't be able to help you before noon, so I'll write everything down. But that map is pretty messed up already. She probably won't be adding anything useful. Uh, no thanks. <laughs> there won't be a need for that. Eh? I'll collect through my own efforts. Is that alright? It's alright, I guarantee it. With that, I jumped off the sea wall. You should get to school now. Yeah. Leaving Misuzu behind, I left that place. I found the front of the shop deep within the market streets. The place was called Sakuma's Recycling. When I entered the store and started calling out for someone, a kind looking female walked out to greet me. Are you the one who's going to help out today? Yeah. Uh, sorry for making you work at this heat. This does seem a bit like a joke. But you're young. You look like someone I can rely on. Pay me a little more then. <laughs> what a funny guy! She began to prepare everything while, I, or while she was laughing. And Yukito wasn't even joking. <laughs> work hard now. As much as possible. I left the shop. A hand trolley was behind me. I started walking while I pulled the trolley along with me. But... What am I doing? My mood was darkening as I listened to the sound of the hand trolley. The sun continued to beat down on me as I pulled the trolley. The sound of the wheels was kind of weary. I glanced around me and found that I was already a fair distance from the ocean. I'm still not there yet? I wiped away the sweat that flowed down my face. No matter how much I think about it, this sweat cannot be refreshing. Only discontenting. The bugs in my stomach growled. Performing in perfect harmony with the noises of the wheels. This is the worst. Unlike my body, I wonder how long my mind can deal with the situation. Whew. 
I stopped the trolley for a bit and took a break. Tranquil Station was in front of me. The scene here looked unchanged, as if time had come to a stop. The wind caressed the branches that grew around it, orchestrating a soothing sound. It felt rela- uh, I felt it was relaxing to listen to. There's nobody at the station. Or not. I focused my eyes on the other side of the heat waves. There was... A girl who looked like she was about to cry from a bubble bursting in her face. The girl used the edge of her shirt to wipe her face off and tried blowing once again. It burst all over her face again. This is sad. <clears throat> Sorry, she kept on repeating the same failure many, many times. Just watching her kind of made me feel sorry for her. That brat, hasn't she wiped her face a bit too much? The best thing to do is pro or to probably do here is pretend that I never saw anything. I cheered the girl on in my mind and prepared to return to my job. The cry of the wheels. But this is all the time that I have for this episode, guys. If you liked it, please hit that thumbs up button down below. And if you haven't already, subscribe. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye!